Hello my friends and welcome to the thousand years of our reign with Christ. Okay now today I'm gonna show you two things the second of which I hope is an eye-opener for somebody. Now my goal here is to reach one person. I know and understand I'm not gonna reach everybody not everybody's going to be able to see this but even though the Bible is very very clear about this it requires faith in order to see it faith in what the word actually says not what somebody teaches okay so the first thing I want to show is here in Romans 16 verse 20 let me read just a little bit of this here okay so it says uh, starting verse 17 now I besiege you brethren mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ but their own belly and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple for your obedience is come abroad unto all men I am glad therefore on your behalf but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you amen now what I want to focus on is this in verse 20 where it says in the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly okay so let's take a look what does that come from what is that speaking of exactly well this goes all the way back to Genesis 3 verse 15 <clears throat> and I will put enmity this is God speaking to the serpent I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel okay so from man came woman and from woman came Christ alright so Jesus is the only one that's ever been been born without a physical father he is the seed and it says it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel talking about the seed of the woman isn't that interesting his and that's clearly in reference to Jesus Christ and this is referring to the end of the world there should be no mistake about it this is the end of the world okay so here in Romans 16 and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly now the, again the this is all throughout the Bible so let me give you some examples and we just go uh, first Corinthians 15 because this to me is just so crystal clear it's incredible right for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet and this is in accordance to the end of the world which is at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ shouldn't be any doubt about it right and here Paul says behold I show you a mystery we shall not all sleep, 
but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Okay. Um, and then let's go to Matthew 24, because it seems very simple once you put the pieces together, once you connect the dots, you can understand at the last trump, the trump of God, the great sound of the trumpet, this is when the angels gather together the elect. All right, let's, let me do it this way. Because sometimes I think two examples are better than one. All right, so if you go to uh, Matthew 13 and read the parable of the wheat and the tares, right? The tares are gathered up and burned. The wheat are gathered up in his barn. All right, the harvest is the end of the world. And of course, in Matthew 24, Jesus is asked, What shall be the sign of thy coming? and of the end of the world. And this is where when we read at the with the great sound of a trumpet they shall gather together his elect. That's the wheat that are that is gathered into the barn and of course the tares are gathered and burned. The tares being the unsaved. Alright so the great sound of a trumpet is the end of the world in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible now let's go to um, let's go to 1 Thessalonians 4 if I'm remembering correctly there we go for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall raise first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord now let's go back to Romans 16 remember what it said and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly so when this is talking about um, those of us being raised to meet the Lord in the air this is when we're up in the air with the Lord and fire comes down from God out of heaven and destroys them all shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly and uh, this is the end of the world. All right, and again, this goes back to Genesis 3, 15. Okay. It, where it says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is all the same thing the great sound of the trumpet it's the end of the world all right and we read this also I mean we could go verse after verse after verse it's and just connect the dots right because it's everywhere in the Bible that's consistent all throughout the Bible Revelation 3 verse 9 Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. So we're going to be up in the air with the Lord Jesus Christ. Our enemy is going to be gathered at our feet. Just like what we read in Matthew 13. The harvest, which is the end of the world, 
is when the wheat is gathered into his barn, which is up in the air, and the tares are gathered into bundles, which is on the ground, and they are burned. Fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all at the end of the world. All right. Yeah, this is exactly what Revelation 20 is teaching us. All right. Now, let me show you something here that might help. This being point number two. And again, it requires faith. You know, not just faith in Jesus Christ, but faith in the Word of God. How can you understand anything if you don't believe the Bible that you hold in your hands? If you don't believe it's from God, the perfect pure Word of God, then you don't believe it at all. Your faith is lacking. And without faith, how can you have understanding? You can't. And that's why I'm encouraging you all to believe fully the Bible that you hold in your hands. When you have faith, your eyes are opened. Alright, so let me do a little word study on the word footstool here. And I would encourage you to do this on your own. And, but I want to show you here in Psalm 110. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. This goes all the way back to Genesis 3, verse 15. Okay, this is all you have to do is connect the dots. I will scroll down a little bit here. Matthew 22, 44, Mark 12, 36, Luke 24, 43. Till I make thine enemies thy footstool. Again in Acts 2, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Alright, so we're seeing this over and over. But to which of the angels said he at any time sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Question mark over and over from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool over and over and over again all right we are taught the very same thing over and over again now to relate this to revelation 20 we see the thousand years are expired. This is at the end of the world. When we are resurrected into the air at the sound of the last trump. Now, i got to make this point that there's only one marriage of the Lamb. There's not two marriages of the Lamb. There's not two resurrections of two different groups of people. There's, the, there's only one resurrected of the saved there's only one marriage of the lamb and it, it annoys me that people suggest that Christ marries two brides it's not in the Bible it's not in Revelation 20 anywhere it annoys me it annoys me to no end because you're essentially su suggesting Jesus Christ is a pervert he had two wives why can't I Jesus Christ only marries one wife, or, or only one bride, right? Or wife, whatever. Same thing. One marriage of the Lamb, and that's at the end of the world. Till I make thine enemies thy footstool is the end of the world, and all wickedness is destroyed forever. All right, so... Here also in Revelation 20, when the thousand years are expired, it is the end of the world. And the angels 
You want to call it Satan? Gathers together the tares and binds them in bundles and fire comes down from God out of heaven and burns them all. All right, this is at the end of the world. And this is taught all throughout the Bible. Consistently from Genesis to Revelation. All throughout the Bible. There is not two ends of the worlds. There are not two marriages of the Lamb. There are not two resurrection of believers. There is not two judgment days. There are not two great day of the Lord's. It's all the same day. All you have to do is connect the dots. And the way that you're able to connect the dots is if you believe the Bible that you hold in your hands. All right, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think. Is there anybody out there that sees it? There is not a thousand year reign of Christ. That's crystal clear. You're looking right at it. And they lived and reigned with Christ. It's talking about us. We that are born of God. We live and reign with Christ. We are priests of God and of Christ right now. We are a royal priesthood right now. The second death has no power over us right now. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. We that are born of God shall never die. All right, please, if you have any questions, comments, anything at all, let me know. Let's have this conversation. My goal is to reach one person with the simplicity of the teaching of the Bible regarding the end of the world, the resurrection, the resurrection of the saved, and then the life to come after, which is really what we're putting our hope into, is it not? We want somebody to deliver us from this wicked world. Just as Moses led his people out of Egypt, out of the wickedness of eat of Egypt so also will Christ deliver us out of the wickedness of this world and we're putting our hope into a world of everlasting life we're not putting our hope in a thousand years of peace knowing that what it's gonna come to an end come on man think about it All right think about it my hope again is to reach one person there's too many false teachers out there in the world today day after day day after and these guys are you know a lot of them are Mormons you know they don't even believe in the Lord Jesus Christ it's unbelievable would you know who these people are if you didn't really know them personally and these are the people that are constantly teaching these false teachings and the true teaching is very simple very simple and nobody explains it better than Jesus and if you're teaching something that Jesus didn't know about Paul didn't know about John didn't know about Peter didn't know about there might be something wrong with what you're teaching I right, think about it. thanks thanks for watching think about it okay believe the word of God.